Hello everyone. In our previous lecture, we discussed about SAC, SOC and how to access the register bank of SOC using a pointer. Today we will move further ahead and we will discuss about how to map struct. So let's have a quick recap. So in our previous uh, lecture, we discuss about like uh, SOC wafer will have multiple blocks and each blocks will have different components. So suppose this component is UART and if we expand UART, the UART will have a starting address. something and it will have a register bank. These registers are also called SFRs, which is known as special function registers. From now onwards, I will call this register set as SFR. Now let's delete this. Let's draw QR. Again, so the UART will have a starting address 0x something, and this is special function registers called SFRs will be presented. And whatever we input in these SFRs our UART will behave accordingly. So this is our understanding till now. And these registers will have some offset. So this will be offset 1, offset 2, offset uh, 1 and 2. And let's assume that we want to access the offset 1 of this UART SFR. We can directly map this one to any pointer the base address plus zero so here base address is the starting address of this one if we do star p plus one we can access the second address if we do star sorry if we do p plus 2 star, we can address the next register and so and so forth. So we can modify and we can access and modify each and every registers of this UART by doing this. So if we choose the pointer type as a character by adding one, our pointer will jump one byte. But suppose if we change this character as n, then adding one to p will jump the pointer to four byte. So character tells the pointer like whenever arithmetic will be performed how much place how much bytes it should jump and it will be equivalent to the size of that data type now let's delete this now let's assume so here I am drawing the SFRs, special functions, functions register bank. So in earlier case, we assumed that each register will be of one byte.
but this is not same in real time scenario so one register first register could be of one byte second register could be of two bytes and third could be of one byte and it will be completely uneven so these kind of sfrs we cannot efficiently access through mere pointers like as we have discussed so in order to solve this kind of problems we have to go for struct mapping so these complete address of sfr can be mapped to some struct and most of the time this struct will be provided by the vendor of the component so whoever is making this uart will provide the provide this struct so here let's take an example here this is a project called bare metal arm so here this is a open source project where they are developing a bare metal firmware in which they have in which they have uart and these are the information sfr informations provided by the manufacturer here they are developing on top of qmu so whoever has developed the qmu emulator has provided this in our case so if you see the register offsets start with zero here zero and each register size is 4 byte because from zero the next register is starting is 4 byte and this again from 14 uh, from 8 to 14 it is reserved it is of no use and so and so forth and this complete registers regist sfrs can be mapped to this uart register so let me remove so whenever this structure is provided we have to understand this first line and this is very important as a embedded developer to understand this line so here you can see the volatile keyword so and it is very important that whenever we want to map something we have to use a volatile keyword so why it is used like when we compile the software and if optimization is on most of the time instead of going and fetching the recent data compiler point to the previous data which it has faced so it caused lot of problem and lot of uncertainty if we do not mention volatile here and next thing this attribute pad so this pad attribute make sure that whatever the summation of the length of these objects the size of the structure will be same as the summation of the inside object defined in most of the cases the struct size will be the multiple of the biggest object defined inside it but we do not want that we want the exact length as we defined in the structure now let's go to the code and we will see how this struct is used so we will go to the source code and uh, i will share the link of this github project 
so if you if we go the header file of the driver we'll find that that structure is copied as it is as in the doc and you will find that each variable is well documented with its purpose so this dr is a data register and this rsp R, uh, rs receiver is the receiver status register and so on and so forth and let's go to the uh, driver file which is ur pl 11c and we will go at the top of it and we will find like we will find here that that structure we have created pointer of that structure and we have mapped that structure to certain address and this address will be the base address of uart again this will be provided by the vendor and as we map this base address to this uart pointer now we can access each and every register of that register bank very easily here if we see uart and this cr register we can easily update like we do as general pointers thank you